What's up, Internet? My name is Lamar Engel, and you are watching The Wine Militia. I am stoked because we get to try a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc, the Sauv, the Blanc, the wild one, Sauvignon Blanc. So Sauvignon Blanc has been around for a while and uh, it has been known for names such as the wild white, if you will, but it is really the mom of the Bordeaux Reds. We have to pay a little bit of homage to our friend Sauvignon Blanc for helping vehicle the big bold red wines that we know today. I mean, we have Sauvignon Blanc growing in beautiful areas throughout the world, but we always end up nodding back to its roots in the Bordeaux region of France. Why is it one way in certain regions and another way in other regions? This is a great question, but it has a lot to do with climate. Climate is almost everything. Soil, next, and then preference. That's just my opinion. Now, I know that Napa and, and Bordeaux, France, and even France in general, sometimes get that Hey, let's play along. We're kind of the same. But I'm here to tell you, they are not the same. Napa Valley is completely different than France. In terms of the soil series, there are 100 plus different soil series in Napa Valley. And in France as well, there's quite a few. The Mediterranean climate is very similar, but we don't find the exact same styles in terms of planting, in terms of positioning those vines in the vineyard that we do in France. Here in Napa, it's the new world. We decided to do things a little different purposely. It also doesn't mean we're always right, just for the record. Okay, yeah, yeah. A lot of times people have split views of it, whether it's the new world style of Sauvignon Blanc or it's the old world style of Sauvignon Blanc. Let me explain. Old world Sauvignon Blanc can have a little stank to it, and it's okay. <laughs> okay! Those wines from those regions are excellent as well. New World Sauvignon Blanc really does mean that. It means that there are new techniques of either fermentation or growing styles in the vineyard uh, and in new regions. Uh, some of these grapes have not been in these regions for, for a long period of time, thus we're calling them new. You'll find New World Techniques are introducing oak regimens, which is really uh, either American, Hungarian, or French, Russian uh, oak barrels, allowing the wine to bathe in those oak barrels and rest for uh, a certain amount of time. Find that the oak barrel lends itself creaminess, super creamy characteristics for Sauvignon Blanc. Whereas with Chardonnay, Chardonnay can take on a little bit more of that toasted characteristic. Last episode we did a little bit of Cabernet Franc, which is the uh, considered the daddy of Bordeaux varieties. Now we gotta go to the mama. I'm gonna call my mom right now. See how she's doing up in the Great White North. You guys wanna meet my mom? Let's give her a call, she doesn't know we're calling. See how this goes. Calling mom. Hello. Hi mom, it's Lamar. Hi. Hi, I, honey. What what's that sound in the background? <laughs> My tablet. <laughs> Your what? I'm listening to some stuff on my tablet. Oh. I, I have to tell you, I'm I'm impressed, but you're doing two things. That you're on the phone, which is a smartphone, and then you're on you're on the tablet, which is also a smart. Uh, like just yesterday, you were uh, using you were using a corded phone. Uh huh. My cell phone. <laughs> if you could live anywhere on the planet, where would you live? Hmm. Next door to my son. Next door. <laughs> <laughs> that might be hard because I have two sons. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> what, 
What would that look like? What would an everyday, every day in the life of, of mom living next door to two of your sons, what would that look like? It would look like mom baking cookies, having cookies on a counter ready for when you have time to come and have a cup of tea. We would drink out of my special teacups. <laughs> tried drinking or sipping on wine ever? No. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. And that's okay. Is it because you're in love yeah. with is it because you're in love with tea so much? Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love you. I love you too, mom. We have today the Kiever Vineyards 2013 Sauvignon Blanc. Now this is a very special Sauvignon Blanc because it comes from a very special family, the Kievers. If you've never met the sweetest, most beautiful family on the planet, you've not met the Kievers. I've got mad respect for the Kiever family. This is a family that came to Napa to set out to retire and ended up getting a vineyard it was an old horse ranch up on the western hills of Yauntville. What's that dab in the middle of Napa? I gotta tell you, I've been to this place. It is gorgeous. It would be a place anybody would want to retire. You don't look at it and go, Well, let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's make some money from this land. We're gonna make some money, gosh darn it. And here's how. We're gonna grow some Sauvignon Blanc. No, that's not how it goes at all. That's actually not how it went for them at all. Matter of fact, they had a very special gentleman by the name of Jim Barber come to them and say, Listen. You've got some special soil here. Matter of fact, you've got the special soil that only certain people will know how to make wine from that particular soil. With that particular arrangement, eastern facing vines catching all that sun as it rises in the morning, there's only one person that can make wine like this. And you know who it is? Celia Welch. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Now, if you don't know who Celia Welch is and you're in the wine industry, I don't know what wine industry you're in, but it's a dismal one. If you haven't had a Celia Welch wine, whether it's from her label Cora or Lindstrom or, let's see, Scarecrow, then you've been drinking from the Naughty Juice. Incredible winemaker, known for her Cabernet Sauvignon. So how much more respect is she gonna give to this wine, which is a Sauvignon Blanc, knowing that she's incredibly talented with our friend Cabernet Sauvignon? Let's dive in. Mm. It's like gooseberry. White flowers. Wild honey. It's a good thing. Mmm, like silky sage. <laughs> White flowers again. I found it. Buy an apple. Mmm, and lychee. I definitely love some lychee. Stone fruit like uh, white peach. Tropical, just. Tropical. Mm. Mm hmm A little bit of limestone. Quite lovely, really. It's quite sophisticated. I feel smarter drinking this, really. Do I look smarter? I love Sauvignon Blanc because it's got a ton of sass. If I was working out a lot more, which you know I do, this would definitely be my recovery beverage after my workout. You're on the treadmill. You're getting off the treadmill, you got your towel. Oh, where's my recovery beverage? It's right here. Sauvignon Blanc, full of vitamin C, packed with a punch, and sunshine in the glass. Crap, that actually pointed at me. <laughs> do, do I own Scarecrow? Like the vineyards? <laughs> I wish! Quick, the first thing that comes to mind. I'm 10 years old, I'm skateboarding, I'm doing a Smith to Bulma's grind onto a side curb and landing on my butt. <laughs> it was the first thing that came to my mind! Tons of sass in the pants. Wait, that wasn't, that wasn't supposed to be intended to be naughty. I'm sorry about that. 
So you guys, if you loved what you saw here and you want to try some of this wine, go ahead and check out the link that I'm going to put in the, in the little description below. Love to see you guys check them out. Also, we're doing this every week. So thank you guys so much for the mad love. And uh, I know it's goofy, but we're just having fun here. We want to we want to take down the pretension level from maybe an 11 to bring it down to a three, if you will. Um, but we are going to mix it up a little bit for you too. So uh, stay tuned, you guys. And again, thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks, you guys. Another bottle. No, I, I definitely do not condone everyone having a recovery beverage on a treadmill. I'm not a physician, I'm not a doctor, but I definitely condone this on the workout bicycles.